from the monsters to the stars. Little Timmy Senor is back with the UFO report. Nobody's going to know. They're going to know. I got to throw, throw some Timmy in there. I, I do. I totally have to throw it. I got to, I'm changing up I, for our audience. I'm going to be changing up a lot of the audio here uh, in the background. Cause I've just been using this stuff for way too long. It's time to change it up a little bit. So Timmy, you're going to get a, you, your, your intro is going to sound the same. I'm going to play with it a little bit. I'm going to play it. with it. Yeah. All right. Dude. What a week so far in the UFO world. We might as well just put the ball on the tee, bring out the driver, and swing for the fences, you know, in that hole in one. Because I'm telling you, busy, busy week already, and it and it all starts in Canada, my friend. It does indeed. And Dave taking the ball, putting it on the tee, and swinging. I would just love to kick it off with a really controversial little piece of Twitterage coming from our very own resident dave scott it's getting some heat and so i'm just going to give the quote this happened oh about a day ago he decided to pop this out into the twitterverse starts out with confirmed hashtag whistleblower david grush has met with canadian government officials regarding ufos uap and crash retrievals in canada the five eyes are involved crashes happened in western and central canada of interest best i got right now ufo twitter at spaced out radio dave please give us the scoop because i haven't even had a chance to give you the rundown of my questions for you we talked earlier but i still haven't hit you so please what can you give us beyond this very vague but intriguing Twitter tweet? Well, first of all, it's not a story I broke. Okay. It's a story I confirmed through a couple people, knowing that there were many others, including Grant Cameron, and I'm going to assume Nicole Sackage because she is Grant's right hand person. Okay. They knew. For a while, and we're sitting on the fact that David Grush had met with Canadian officials. Now, whether they knew his name or not at that time, I'm not sure, but they knew that there was some big meetings going on. So when Larry McGuire, the MP member of parliament for the uh, Brandon Souris area of Manitoba, came out with his letter that was broken by George Knapp and Jeremy Corbell a couple of nights ago. Okay, that letter uh, came out actually in May. For some reason, we all missed it. We all missed it, but George and, and, and Jeremy were able to get their hands on it, and they ran with it on their podcast called Weaponized. So many questions started coming out of this, saying that this was you know major news, this is a bombshell report. I know people in Ottawa. I know people at the Pentagon. So. I decided to put my journalism hat back on and I made a couple phone calls and these sources, I'm not going to say who they are because this is how, and this is for the UFO world. Look, I know a lot of people do not trust media right now, Tim, and we haven't trusted the media in a long time, but I still think that there are good media people out there. And I try to be one of those, try really hard. Okay. It's going against the grain of what we see in infotainment on the nightly news these days and these years. And so I like confirming things. So my sources in Ottawa, I was able to confirm that there was some sort of meetings that this letter that is called the big bombshell isn't really a bombshell at all it's more of a firing a rocket 
over HMCS Trudeau and his team of misfits and literally saying, hey, guys, when are you going to talk about this story? We know you're having chatter. We know Dr. Mona Niemer, Canada's top scientist, is involved. She's trying to bring together all of the alphabet agencies under one roof with everything. We know that. This is all old news behind the scenes. And yes, some of it has come out. Okay, from Daniel Otis, from us, from uh, Grant Cameron, from many others, Chris Rutkowski as well. Okay, but not much has come out of the United States. Okay, in regards to it. So the the point that I'm getting at is a lot of Americans don't understand how the Canadian political system works. Larry Maguire being part of the opposition has zero power, zero authority. The only p- party in power, which is the Canadian Liberal Party, which is run by Justin Trudeau, the prime minister, are the only ones that can make any sort of decisions. However, what the opposition party can do is they could fire salvos over the ministers of parliament and the prime minister himself to bring it to attention. And that's exactly what he did, bringing it to Canadian Ministry of Defense Minister Anita Anand, basically saying, when are you going to open up about this? When are you going to talk about it? Isn't it time that we got things done? We're meeting with five eyes. We know AUKUS is meeting. We know the five eyes have their own private UFO group. What's Canada's role? Tell us. Because even though Larry Maguire is a leader in this field, in Canada, okay, he's not a ufologist. He's got a keen interest in Canadian security. So what he's doing here, Tim, is he is trying to get the conversation public. He knows the Liberal Party is going through a lot of of, uh, problems right now. More recently, the Prime Minister is under police investigation for his role in this case called SNC-Lavalin, which was funneling money into this SNC-Lavalin company. So he's now being investigated by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. So why not just throw more dirt on it? Why not throw more, more, more grease on the fire? Everybody's talking UFOs. The Liberal Party of Canada has been conspicuously silent on this while the opposition conservatives and other members from other parties have started talking about it. So that is why I believe he fired the salvo to get the conversation going. Now, Maguire cannot do anything. He can just comment. He can meet with people. As Lou Elizondo pointed out on this show last year, I set up a conversation between Elizondo and Maguire to get that conversation going between Canada and the United States. That led to more conversations. It led to potential meetings, which included Grant Cameron, Nicole Sackage, and many others. But unfortunately, those meetings fell through. Okay, what is important about this letter is it talks about crash retrievals. Now, most Canadians will never think that a UFO has crashed in Canada. We now know through sources that there is one at least in the northern reaches of Manitoba that has landed in the hands of the United States military in a joint effort. Canada got a few pieces, and so did the Americans. Where did it happen? We know it didn't happen in Jarhead, which is an Indian reserve, or probably Jackhead, which is an Indian reserve, even though a few years ago it was alleged that a UFO had crashed there in the middle of winter. That did not happen. We know there it wasn't Falcon Lake. 
because that was only drips of metal coming off the craft. It wasn't a crash retrieval. This is where it's all going. Okay. It's going on the scientific side. And I think, as you and I have talked in the past, that Canada taking this on a scientific role is is going to probably accomplish a little bit more publicly than we will have noticed from the United States. That's the way I look at it. Your thoughts? Simply because they're talking about exploitation of materials, correct? It, it gives them some somewhere to start from, at least. I think that's right. Especially considering what I still would consider a bombshell letter. Some of the things that are in the letter from Larry Maguire MP have some bold significance. Um, just as the tagline reads, the Defense Research and Development Canada in possession of recovered UAP material. I mean, that's that's a huge top line and then details following below. And the fact that it, it is going to the Minister of Defense um, just kind of proves that it's information that we're assuming he already had, as you were saying, and it's kind of saying it's time to talk about it. And I love that you highlighted that. So pointing out that the five eyes are involved and that they are very aware of secretive programs concerning the recovery and exploitation of these materials um, shows that it's got a paper trail, you know, and the fact that it is being picked up by the United States, you know, finally, I know originally this letter was penned back in March 22nd of 2023, but now we are getting it brought forward, not just by um, our media through Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp through their weaponized podcast, but also written uh, by Christopher Sharp and covered by Liberation Times. Bringing this topic to the United States is massively important, knowing that this discussion is being going on for quite a while. And it's on another level at this point in Canada in particular, I must say. The fact that there isn't such a, let's say, urgency, I guess, is, um, oh, that's you know. Wait a that's a, the, the Canadian media has not really opened up to this. Okay, they are still not really covering it. They may scrape across the story, but they're not interested in covering this. Okay, it, it doesn't have uh, the the beauty of the coverage that is happening in the United States. Why it isn't, I have no idea. I've talked to my fellow journalists about it, and it's it's a non-story. Don't know why, but it is. Okay. Do you feel like it's potentially the same reason that David Grush didn't get traction in the United States? No, it's different than that. We're Our media is more woke culture right now, and I'm not saying that to be insultive of, of anybody, but they're more about, of, about feelings these days rather than telling actual news stories. Okay, and... A lot of, and what I just said is very controversial. A lot of people in Canada may not like that. Okay. But the truth is we're not getting a lot of hard news around here anymore. Okay. We're getting a lot yeah. of, a lot of fluff, a lot of how do you feel type news. Okay. Rather than, rather than reporting on the, the horrors of the forest fires or that are burning in a lot of the provinces in Canada or, Indeed. you know, concentrating on the government conspiracies that are going on regarding, you know, like Teflon Trudeau. Okay. I mean, that's just the way it is right now. We're, we need feelings. We, you know, somebody has their burger smashed at McDonald's. Well, we have to do a news report on that because we're worried about that person's feelings that they didn't get to eat their hamburger. Right. That's the way we're doing news up here these days. Uh, and, and so the other thing too, is the Canadian military is not popular. Okay. They have record lows in new recruits. 
they have actually had to raise the 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 payment for fighter pilots just to keep them from retiring you know and why somebody would want to retire from flying an f-18 i don't know i mean uh, i i would like to do it you know pay me i'll, I'll do it i'll be like uh, cousin eddie there in independence day you know randy quaid I have, a, I have a i have a quick question for you yeah um, diving into this letter from Larry McGuire, MP, um, I'm kind of curious. In a quote here, he says, I'm writing to recommend you request a classified briefing containing full sensitive and protected program information from your officials on the government of Canada's historical and ongoing efforts on analyzing recovered UAP material. And it goes on to say recovered foreign material is studied through the Five Eyes Foreign Material Program, FMP, which in Canada is sponsored by the Canadian Forces Intelligence Command, aligned with several intelligence sharing arrangements and treaties. Is this quote inferring that uh, Minister Anand doesn't already know this or that he hasn't already been briefed? Is that what we are to uh, take away from this? We know she has been briefed a minimum of two to three times, not only by her own Ministry of Defense, but by U.S. government officials as well. And we may even include David Grush in that, Luis Elizondo in that, and many others. It, it's a list that needs to be compiled that I believe will get out of the United States more than we will get out of Canada. Okay, because Canada still has that, that attitude of if we don't talk about it, we don't have to deal with it. Kind of like MUFON. MUFON and the Canadian government have the same attitude. You know, and I, and I say that in jest. But the point that I'm, to follow your point, McGuire is just trying to get the ball moving, trying to get the ball moving forward, basically calling out Anon saying, what do you know? Tell us what you know. What have you been briefed on? I wish he would do it in question period when the cameras are on in the House of Commons. But he hasn't done that yet. He's playing a very he's playing the slow game and a calculated game. And this is where it gets interesting. And we're going to continue, Tim, with the coverage of this uh, UFO news out of Canada, as many of our listeners like to call it. Thank you, White House Press Secretary, for calling us Canada. That's how that was found. The UFO report. But Tim Senor continues on Spaced Out Radio with the final half hour right after this. Stay tuned. My name is Dave Scott. So glad you're tuning us on in. Fun times, Timmy. Oh, it really is. It really is. It's hot in here tonight. I have my door open. It's getting hot in here. Yeah. Yeah. Starfish Troopers podcast. How are you? Uh, who else do we have in here? The lovely and talented Nicole Sackage. There's been a random gee sighting. Big Dog, Big J, Big Nuts. Uh, reality, how you doing? Alex Sanchez, nice to see you. Philippe Baca, good to have you here. Hi, Apollo 11. Nice to see you as well. So I had an artistic AI draw me mm -hmm. as a Viking and it got my widow's peak just right. You tell me what you think. Looks more like me than you. If you, President Zaddy, does that look more like Tim or a younger me? Let's have a fan vote. Jay Don, how you doing, man? Hold on. Does that picture look more like Tim or more like me? Deb says Dave. Vashti <laughs> Taylor says Dave. 
Mike Bothwell says Dave. Steven Edmond says Dave. Max Stack says Dave. And here the whole time, Tim, I thought Roderick Martin was my twin. <laughs> You're the triplet now. Well, according to this, I did have a widow's peak when I had hair. And I did grow it long into a ponytail, so it is bizarre. <clears throat> I'd like to see you uh, grow your hair out again. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, show my double chin on there. It makes me real attractive. Thank you. No, it look, <clears throat> looks like you're double hosting. Mm. You're double mm. hosting. You're doing that a great was, job. That was on the way to Area 51. Yes, Rob G. I'm not sure how you haven't seen the the resemblance between Roderick and myself with the the white beards and you know the deep masculine voices. Hmm. Yeah, Derek Galloway showing his true colors, playing ponytail soccer. Mm hmm. <laughs> I did play soccer and had a ponytail. I'm, so I'm sorry, yeah. but. I'm sorry, your parents. He called you. it. He called it. No, they just let me pick. And there was either that or lacrosse. And I actually played lacrosse as well. So, sorry. Man's like field lacrosse. hockey. Yeah. I like lacrosse. Lacrosse, lacrosse is a tough game. Forget about it. Yeah. Dude, you want to see some real killer lacrosse? Go watch uh, the Canadian Nationals. There's this team out of, I believe they're out of Ontario. They're called the Six Nations. Dude, these guys are brutally strong and tough and mean and dirty. And yeah. it's a beautiful game when they play. It's so much fun. 509er, how you doing? Uh, Jeremy wants to know, soccer, do you use bumpers at the bowling alley too, Tim? No, but my son does. Oh. And my son definitely does. He's learning. And my daughter. Thurston Hell the third. If you're from Six Nations, then you know what I'm talking about. How, how great and, and vicious their lacrosse is. Uh, when is the big next symposium? Uh, I I don't know, Lee. There's a lot. I talked to Melinda Leslie today, and she didn't know. And, uh, but we're all waiting on pins and needles, man. Uh, thank you tonight to Steven on his birthday, Jake, NorCal, Sandra, Vaughn, Mikey, yeah, Sandra on her birthday too, by the way, Deb and Vash the Impaler, Aaron Baca, the young Aaron, what's happening? Of course, random guy uses bumpers on while bowling. By the way, random guy, potential second or third week of August. Here we go, everyone. All right, let's kick off this final half hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. Good to have you with us. My name is Dave Scott. Appreciate hurting your listening ears. Reminder, if you haven't yet, check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read the newswire, check out our swag. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show, and on TikTok at Spaced Out Radio. Little Timmy Senor is here for the UFO report. Tim, we're still talking Canada, Canada, Canadian military, Canadian UFOs. You had a bunch of questions you wanted to fire off. We do. And so part of the Larry Maguire letter also writes that in this quote, 
Recovered Foreign Material is studied through the Five Eyes Foreign Material Program, the FMP, which in Canada is sponsored by the Canadian Forces Intelligence Command, aligned with several intelligence sharing arrangements and treaties. Could you please go into detail what the inference is here that the Five Eyes Foreign Material Program, excuse me, <clears throat> what is that? Could you go into detail? Well, this is something that is a little bit new coming out of that letter because a lot of people had only heard about the idea that the Five Eyes actually had their own UFO program going. So McGuire actually confirmed something that a lot of people thought of right there. So a lot of people who are wondering what is the Five Eyes or who are the Five Eyes, we need to explain that first and foremost. That is a pact between the United Kingdom, New Zealand, Australia, the United States, and Canada for military protection as well as global protection, along with trade protection. So it's a very important group of allies that have got together to kind of uh, protect the Pacific as well as the Atlantic regarding anything to do with defense or trade or anything, more so defense uh, when it comes down to it. And with that, they have been passing in, and we I've known for a couple of years that the Five Eyes has been passing UFO information back and forth to each other with the United States kind of being the home of that information. So if something did happen, they were all kind of funneling their stories into the United States, but every country had access to those logs of what happened regarding UFOs and or crash retrievals, et cetera. But McGuire becomes the first one to actually come out and publicly state that this group does exist, not allegedly is, exists, but does exist. So that's the importance of that. Okay. And I also see here that it says in May of 2023, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, who leads the U.S. government's UAP office known as Arrow, disclosed having conducted a meeting with the Five Eyes Nations to discuss the subject of UAP. And as per McGuire and numerous sources, it has become evident that the Five Eyes connection concerning UAP extends far beyond surface level involvement. And so we also heard from you that we had David Grush also speaking to the Five Eyes. Is that correct? Yes. David Grush, the latest and greatest whistleblower to come out uh, in regards to the UFO phenomena. His name has been all over this show and all over the Internet for the last two weeks here or so. Uh, he's a realtor out of Colorado who is former uh, United States Air Force uh, a decorated soldier. I think we can call him that. That's fair to say. He is a combat veteran, along with, uh, after his Air Force career, joining the UAPTF, where he became a whistleblower. And, you know, we've been talking about, even last night on the show, where we were talking about the fact that he was the first one to bring up that pilots are in these craft, which I think was massive. If I was still mainstream media, I'd be still all over that story, still all over it. And we still are to an extent. But if I was mainstream media, I'd be all over it still trying to get some more information on what he meant by pilots. Long story short, we know now through my sources and confirmation from others who are in the know as well, that he has met with government officials in Canada at least twice could be three times or more to talk about this subject, about what he knew, whether that was in the official capacity of the UAPTF or not, we do not know. Uh, we do know that uh, he has had conversations and that he is kind of, I don't want to say in a tour of talking to members of the five eyes about this, but his, his knowledge is becoming very important to what is happening and allows uh, say, for instance, in Canada, the ministers and the members of parliament to be able to, who are interested in this subject, to be able to uh, bear witness to what the United States is talking about. So one of the things that we do have to uh, understand here, when somebody like Grush or Luis Elizondo breaks down their information, they actually have to go through a vetting process of that information 
so they don't break any American NDAs or give up any American military secrets. So they're allowed to give a lot more than what you and I would get from them, but they're not giving up sensitive information because America is, in the end, about protecting the United States. It's not about protecting Canada or the UK. It's about the United States. But they do have this agreement that if something does happen that coincides with what other countries are experiencing, then they will share if it doesn't uh, affect national security on a major level in the U.S. So I do want to clarify that for our American listeners as well. Excellent. And could you also dive a little deeper into this next portion concerning AUKUS? As McGuire writes in this quote, I'm concerned with the expected upcoming public announcements, which will be coordinated between AUKUS, A-U-K-U-S, which could damage Canada's credibility with our allies and the Canadian public on the global stage concerning the UAP subject. Um, could you go into a little more detail what that means? My headphones cut out for there for a second. Can sure. I get you to just repeat that a little bit, please? Sure. So according to McGuire, the alliance at AUKUS, A-U-K-U-S, the trilateral, yeah. the trilateral, sorry, trilateral security pact involving Australia and the UK and the US. Um, he's saying that he's, he's concerned that expecting upcoming public announcements will be coordinated between AUKUS, which could damage Canada's credibility with allies and Can Canadian public on the global stage concerning UAP subject. Absolutely. What he means by that is... Uh, Canada, the United, or pardon me, the United States, the UK, and Australia have all, if I if I remember this correctly, they have all complained about Canada's lack of attention towards military protection of North America, of NORAD, of NATO, and their role. Canada, going back 30 years, used to have an extremely prominent role, especially in peacekeeping forces by the UN. That has since fallen by the wayside, especially over the last 8 to 16 years. So what happened was the UK, Australia, and the United States formed their own defense pack and left Canada out of it, which was a cause for concern by the opposition party, the conservatives here, which Larry Maguire is a part of because he believes that Canada should be a part of that, and rightfully so, okay? Our boys and girls are playing in 45-year-old aircraft. They're playing in, in with, uh, uh, you know, the Army is playing with tanks that are 40 years old. All of our equipment, we only get just enough to get by. So whereas, let's say you have transport planes almost in every state, we have one base for transport planes. That's in Thunder Bay, Ontario, that services the entire country, the second largest country in the world. Our army numbers have dwindled to, I believe, where well, let me let me just get this check, do a check here. How many service members in the Canadian Armed Forces? Canada has a personnel of 92,600. That is for the Army, Navy, and Air Force. We don't have a Marine Corps. Okay, and it's a combined staff where they all work together. Okay, so the the idea that we are not getting our, our troops the proper equipment to do their job has been a reference of concern by the Americans, the United Kingdom, and Australia. This is where I believe McGuire jumps in and says, we should be embarrassed as Canadians that we haven't upgraded our Air Force. We haven't upgraded to latest technologies for our army. Canada likes to be a leader in saying, you know what, the mili you know, militaries are obtuse these days and obsolete. But that's not true. We're still in a very, very dangerous world. 
And all it takes is another 9-11 type scenario to get Canada to smarten up a little bit. Um, recently, also in this, Maguire refers to upcoming public revelations that will stem from American FMPs. And I believe that in tail, there's an inference that he also singles out defense research and development in Canada, the DRDC, which he asserts as per the title of this letter, has participated in efforts to analyze UAP materials, which is traceable back to circa 1950. And so the DRDC is Canada's version of America's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA. And so I was wondering, could you maybe speak to the inference that this DRDC has um, recently made an outright omission that they're in possession of recovered UAP material, feeling, you know, that's a pretty big giant leap and a big statement. And I was wondering, since you probably have an idea of what they're talking about, what does that statement mean for Canada's version of DARPA? Well, I think what it means is Canada's still in the UFO game. Nobody asks and they don't have to tell. You know, they can put it out there on their on their websites that they are going through this. We know Canada has been involved in the UFO game since the 1950s with uh, Wilbur Smith. Okay, and uh, Wilbur Smith was literally North America's leading scientist or researcher, whatever you want to call him, on this subject to the point where the United States military was sending him information regarding research on this project, Project Magnet. And that's where Grant Cameron is way more expert than me on this subject. Way more expert than me. He he has books upon books of Wilbur Smith's notes and studies regarding the phenomena. And we know, though, that Canada has always been a leader. This is where we get to the don't ask, don't tell. Okay, or don't ask, we don't need to tell if nobody asks type of attitude. We know that they are sharing. That's just obvious. If we have our own crash retrievals here, yeah, we're going to share some with our with our friends to the south. Absolutely. But we do need a, an area of study here. And that's why Dr. Mona Niemer, Canada's top scientist right now, is trying to bring a unit together all under one roof to study the files that everybody has from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police to CSIS to the Ministry of Defense to NAV Canada, Transport Canada, all of the major uh, energy companies. This is where it all kind of, she's trying to get a hold of that information to put it all under one roof. So the fact that we do have uh, people looking into crash retrievals uh, and, and materials, not surprising whatsoever. That's excellent. Um, thank you for that. In the letter addressed to Anand, McGuire carbon copied the following officials. Melanie Jolie, Canada's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Omar Algebra, Canada's Minister of Transport, Dr. Mona Niemer, Canada's chief scientist, I'm just relaying the list you just did, Major General Michael Wright, commander of Canadian Forces Intelligence Command. Um, and knowing that these people were also brought in on this, you in the beginning of the show kind of said that this just feels like a warning shot. However, knowing that those people were CC'd in on this, do you feel with the big movement, the top scientists are now launching their study in Canada on UAP known as the Sky Canada Project. There's a big movement for transparency in Canada. This feels a little bit more than just a warning shot. Why do you feel there's more to come? Well, because, I mean, Canada wants to open it up on a scientific level. We don't play the military game here. Okay, I mean, you and I have had that conversation publicly on this show and privately as well. 
McGuire wants the story out. As long as it doesn't hurt Canadian national security, he wants the story out. And that's kind of this, you know, the difference between the Canadian direction of ufology and the American direction. Okay. Which is the threat narrative, which we've heard so much about. So the fact that he has listed all of those people tells me point blank. He goes, I know what's going on. I know what's happening here. I know what you guys are doing. I know what information you're holding. I just can't say anything because I'm not the guy in power. Anita Anand, the Minister of Defense, is the lady in power regarding this subject. Now, whether she's taking it seriously, whether Prime Minister Trudeau is taking it seriously, I highly doubt it. And we know that, like you're saying, they, the, they're they looking at the science aspect of this. And in a quote, McGuire stated, it is essential the chief science advisor be given full access to the defense programs and be briefed on the collaborative scientific research efforts with our allies. That tells me that they have a different, perhaps, level of security attached to this information than we do here in the United States. Because according to everyone involved so far on the UAP research front in this country, we've seen nothing but security, 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 and people not getting access to the proper information before they can make an educated decision on this topic. So it looks like Canada has done something different. Is that right? Is there a different classification yeah. attached to this information? Look, they're not going to do anything to piss off the Americans. Because in the end, America controls this subject. What they are going to do is push the limits on the science of it all. Okay? They're coming at it from a completely different angle. Threat narrative in the U.S., no threat narrative in Canada. Just want to make sure that there is not a national security issue. That's what they're waiting for. That's what they're striving for right now. And that's what it's all about, Tim. It's actually quite easy. Well, I'm just happy to see that we're talking about it in this country and that finally the story has come to light. You know, um, I think it's great that we're getting these headlines and that this conversation is moving in this way. I was aware of this letter, but I didn't really get the gravity of it, I think, until recently with everything else that we've seen align that's come since. Yeah, what's going to be interesting to find out coming up here is that no, we only got about two and a half minutes to go here for tonight. Okay. But what we need to see is how does this play out? I do not think there's going to be any public statements from um, Mona Niemer, the top scientist. I don't think Anita Anand is going to be commenting on it, especially the fact that the prime minister right now is in a little bit of legal trouble with the SNC Lavalin case. Now, whether that affects what everybody else does, We'll have to see. I mean, Canada right now, people aren't interested in UFOs. We have uh, interest rates at 6.5% going up again. Um, mortgages, uh, the majority of Canadian mortgages are going to be expiring within the next two to two and a half years. And people are freaking out on how they are going to pay their mortgages. Okay, with, with current interest rates, if they stay the same and do not get lowered. So there is a lot of bigger issues right now in Canada with the Canadian government than UFOs. But the fact that Larry Maguire fired this, this shot over the bow, it's like the, uh, you know, it's like the wicked witch of the West, man. She's always watching. And that's Larry Maguire right now. He's always watching. And I love it. I love it. Thanks for tonight, Dave. This has been fun. Yes. And by the way, that tweet, by the way, had, it doesn't sound like much, but for what we do, it's a lot. It had 880 likes, 144 retweets, and eight quotes. I'll take that. Beauty, eh? Absolute <laughs> beauty. By the way, uh, Jimmy Ducks, New Jersey. The guy is using gray alien gifts. He's obviously a joke. We'll just respond on that one. You're a joke. 
right across the back. Hold, hold on. Your Ray Romano, not <laughs> funny. <laughs> not funny. Yeah. There we go. That felt good. Sometimes <laughs> I like being sarcastic on Twitter. Nobody wants to be Ray Romano not funny. Tim, great job, my man. We'll see you in a couple days. Thank you to everybody else on the show tonight. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thal rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio. Rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at work, at home, in your cars, wherever you may be. Thank you to everyone in our chat rooms tonight. YouTube, Twitch, LGAP, Facebook, Spreaker, the Space Travelers Club, LinkedIn, and on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. I know you're out there somewhere. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for choosing to share your evening with us, because together, my friends, we own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Yes. The Wu train has docked for the night. But soon, my friends, we shall ride again. Your seats are always available. Your tickets never expire. And if you want to bring a friend, we got room for them, too. Good night.